Robert here with Fiddleback Forge, another Fiddleback Friday. There's only two more, including this one, till the end of 2020. It is almost over. But we're not here to talk about 2020. I'm here to show you some awesome knives like these. All right, 15 total knives to show you. 13 of those are Fiddlebacks. Man, Curly Ash, my Sir Birch back there. Got a bunch of lace wood, East Indian rosewood, got some micartas, got some G10s, got some canvas micartas. Amy killing it this week. Man, sweet knife. And then of course we got Mr. Joey Berry, JB Knife Works, absolutely killing it with the American Gyo 2. 15 awesome knives, can't wait to show you these in hand. Now, since I'm gonna show you every one of these knives in hand, video can get a little bit long. Feel free just to skip ahead to the one you're looking for. Typically, we'll put a timeline down in the description so you can use that as your guide on where to go in the video to get those. So if you're new around here, you may be wondering, Robert, how do I get one of these amazing knives? Well, it's pretty simple. We do this every single Friday, even if there's not a video like the one you're watching. Every single Friday, we put new knives up on the website under the Fiddleback Friday tab it's on the shop tab fiddlebackforge.com is where you can find those 9 p.m eastern standard time is when knives like this post fresh up on the site you got to be the first one to finish the checkout completely to get the knife that you're looking for it's not enough just to put it in your cart so make sure that you are there early and ready to hit the refresh button right at 9 p.m eastern standard time so without further delay let's just go ahead and see what all these knives look like in hand all right, we are gonna kick things off with this gorgeous beast right here. This is, of course, a Fiddleback Forge Bushfinger model. Very popular knife, four inch blade on that bad boy right there, eight and a half inches overall. Now the Bushfinger is one of Andy's original and first designs that he ever did. And as you can tell, it has been dialed in over the last decade to be absolutely perfect. Definitely one of my favorite knives. If you like one that locks back here on the pommel and it's kind of thin for a really strong grip, uh, that's going to be the one for you. Kind of a thin feeling handle. Uh, it's not super full, so it really locks in if you like getting real super tight grips on your knives. The Bushfinger is a great choice for that. So let's talk about that handle. Absolutely stunning. You see the Trinity pin out right there. This is Masur Birch, of course. Absolutely gorgeous with a mocha paper micarta bolster. I hope the detail is coming out on camera the way that it does in person for this thing. It's absolutely stunning. Natural liners, the red pinstripes lining everything just absolutely knocks it out of the park. You can see it right there on the pommel. You can see that it does have a tapered tang. Starts life as 530 seconds uh, before it hits that taper tang. And it is, of course, 8670, as you can tell by the hammer texture right there. Absolutely gorgeous, super well done. That is the Bushfinger. Now, if you like the Bushfinger model, uh, but you don't necessarily like bolsters, well, that's perfectly okay because we also have this stunning Bushfinger right here in a very simple yet classy black canvas micarta, no bolsters, black liners. Again, that red pinstripe, absolutely killing it. Again, also 530 seconds before it goes down to that really sweet taper, taper tang that you see there. Absolutely awesome. Uh, that simpleness of that black canvas micarta, that's a base material for us, so that's gonna save you a little bit of money, but you still get the dress up on the 530 seconds, 8670 steel with the taper tang. Awesome, awesome. You see the hammer texture looks fantastic on that. At beautiful, simple, classy. And again, it's a bush finger, so you can't go wrong with that. So like I mentioned, the bush finger back here, both of these do have uh, more of a thinner profile handle as far as not feeling as full in hand. This particular knife, not so much. Very full figured. Uh, this is the Bush Hermit, and it's the latest, some say greatest, bushcraft knife out of the Fiddleback Forge shop. It certainly is a super model and a fantastically popular one to boot. And you throw in some curly ash on that bad boy, 
Absolutely stunning. Hopefully you can see that chatoyance there. You can see the figure bounce on it. Absolutely awesome. Got the Trinity pin out, of course. 8670 steel. You can tell by the hammer texture right there. Beautiful grind on that as well. Bush Hermit, absolute culmination of everything Andy has learned over the last decade making bushcraft knives. And it doesn't get more simple and sexy than that right there. 530 seconds, of course, with that sweet taper tang you see there. Absolutely gorgeous. Bush Hermit, very, very comfortable in hand. That's one of the reasons it's so popular. Four inch blade, eight and three quarters inch overall. And this thing is just comfortable no matter how you hold it. If you like it full, like you can see there with that full grip, my fingers are barely touching on the other side of my hand there. So it really fills up the hand if that's something that you like. Uh, definitely a good model for you. And because it indexes so well, you always know where it is in hand. Uh, but it's also open enough that no matter what size hands you have, it feels comfortable in your hand no matter what. So that's the Bush Hermit. Set it back here next to the Bush Fingers. All right, next up. In the four inch blade range, of course, this is the Arte or Arete or Arete or however you want to say it. I mean, you'd be saying it wrong, but that's okay. You do you. We won't judge. As you can tell, natural canvas micarta on that handle. Absolutely stunning. I love the way the figure turned out on that. And of course, the natural canvas uh, also saves you a little bit of money since it's a base material. Got the Trinity pin out right there. Taper tang, as you can see. And it's uh, 530 seconds before it hits that sweet taper back here. Let me show you that a little bit more on the pommel. Absolutely awesome. Now the Arte, four inch blade on that bad boy right there. Eight and a half inches overall. So very close in spec wise uh, to the bush fingers, but totally different blade shape with the spear, more of a spear point blade shape. Super high grind on that one, as you can tell as well. Really super well done. And this knife was actually co-designed co or maybe even full design, can't remember the details, uh, by Jason Mullenbelt, which you might recognize as a sheath maker over at Diomedes Industries that makes sheaths for Fiddleback Forge knives. You can check those out on Fiddleback Outpost. Uh, but he originally designed this knife with Andy or for Andy because of Andy uh, back in the day. So it's been a very popular model we've had for a while and for good reason, super duper functional bushcraft knife right there. All right, next up in the cool bushcraft world, but uh, also just small enough that you could carry this one EDC every day if you wanted to. This is the Shogun, and this is the middle brother of the Shogun uh, series that goes along with the Emperor and the uh, Daimyo is the small one. Uh, but the Shogun is the most popular size because it's a middle size. You can see the Trinity pin out right there. Uh, this is Osage on the handle. And Osage, when exposed to UV light, uh, gets darker over time. So it's going to turn more of like a honey brown, golden brown color. Really sweet when it does that. It brings out the grain a lot more. I love that's a feature of the Osage. It ages really well, which goes super well with the 8670 steel, which will also get a really nice patina over time. So the more you use this knife, it's just gonna tell a story about everywhere it's been and everything it's done. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, black liners, orange pinstripes on that. Uh, you can also tell that that is a skeletonized full tang and not tapered. Love the way Osage finishes out on the ends, right there on the pommel. So three and five eighths inch on the blade on this, seven and seven eighths inch overall, so just under eight inches. Total, very open design, so no matter what hand size that you have, it'll feel very comfortable in hand. It's got kind of that upswept design uh, on the spine and on the bottom, follows along. Uh, it's kind of a Kwai Ken style uh, throwback, but very bushcrafty indeed. Very cool knife, that's the Shogun. All right, so next up, this is the Warthog. Very reminiscent in handle shape uh, to a Hiking Buddy. If you're familiar with a Hiking Buddy, this will feel very familiar in hand. It is not the same handle as the Hiking Buddy, however. It's just uh, around the same size, uh, very close in shape, but the similarities very much in there uh, because when you look at that upswept tip, very precision oriented blade, uh, it becomes very obvious this is definitely no hiking buddy, especially this one with the super high grind. This thing is an absolute razor blade. It's 330 seconds, 8670 steel. 
Absolutely stunning skeletonized full tang. No need to taper that tang on this 330 seconds. It's already lightweight enough. Absolutely awesome. That wood right there is Sedona lacewood. Now, that doesn't mean the tree grew in Sedona or anything like that. That's just what the color reminds us of. It's absolutely gorgeous. Really, really stunning. Nice figure in that as well. Three and a half inch, uh, oh, three and a quarter inch blade. Sorry, three and a quarter inch blade, seven and three eighths overall. Super nice EDC knife, especially if you like something with a precision tip. Uh, that thing is gonna be a winner winner. Chicken dinner all day long. That is the Warthog. And here goes another beauty in the lace wood. This is a mocha lace wood on a bush raptor. And of course, the bush raptor, the raptor part comes from the shape of the blade, uh, very much like a, a raptor's talon or a uh, velociraptor, as it were, if you are a Jurassic Park fan. That mocha colored lace wood on there is absolutely gorgeous, as is the natural liners. Line pinstripes really bring a pop of color. Uh, that is very welcome in that. Absolutely goes super well. Almost brings out an orange tone uh, to the wood. But if you want more of a, like a hiking buddy size almost, it's a little bit longer blade than the hiking buddy, a little bit longer in the handle as well. Very, very familiar in shape as far as the handle goes uh, for a hiking buddy. But if you want something more with a downturn, almost a Warncliffe style blade, uh, that's good for precision and picking, uh, that one's gonna be excellent. As you can see, full four finger grip on there. Very comfortable no matter how you're holding it and uh, very precision oriented and gorgeous. That's gonna make somebody super duper happy. Three and a half inch blade on that, seven and three quarters inch overall, 8670 on the steel, as you can tell by the hammer texture there. That thing is awesome. Put her right back there. All right, so moving away from the cam canvas micartas and the natural handle materials, we're gonna go in the opposite direction of natural handle materials right here. We're gonna go for G10, and this is Lager G10 to be exact. And as you can tell, when you put that white liner, that white pinstripe underneath, it really brings the color out and makes that natural color of the Lager G10 really pop out. Uh, this model, of course, is the CR1. Uh, CR stands for Carl Recksteiner. Uh, he is a knife maker that has inspired Andy a lot over the years. Uh, and this knife in particular is inspired by one that uh, Carl made that Andy bought off of him uh, that has some pretty unique design features. Obviously, this one has been fiddle-backed, as it were, uh, but you'll notice immediately uh, it's not an open handle design. It very much locks in your pinky right here on the pommel, uh, but then leads to this little hump that needs to be discussed for sure. Uh, because that is not something you put your in between your fingers. That's actually something you put right on your ring finger and it gives you a lot of grip, a lot of control and gives you a nice little pivot point. It really makes a huge difference that you have to feel in your hand. It's super comfortable knife. It's very, very confidence inspiring because you know that that is not coming out of your hand. It really, really locks it down. Um, like I said, natural liners. This is actually yellow pinstripes. Sorry, I said white, but uh, eighth inch, 8670 steel, as you can tell by the hammer texture there. And we do have a taper on this one as well, as you can see, really beautifully done. Turn out super duper well. Three and three quarters inch on the blade, eight inches overall, really, really nice everyday carry and general task knife. You'd be super happy carrying that around. All right, next up is the Nora. So this is gonna be the, the last of the longer blades. And in this case, by longer blade, I mean a four inch blade. So this one right here, 8670 on the steel. This thing is long and lean and it's only 330 seconds in thickness. So it is an absolute razor blade for sure. East Indian Rosewood on the handle of the Nora right there. You can see very faintly, you might be able to make out that Trinity pin out with the black pins to match those black liners, lime pinstripes, Skeletonized full tang, of course, no need to taper 330 seconds on that long of a handle. This thing is already lightweight and nimble enough for sure. Very, very comfortable knife, especially if you like a thinner, more lean handle. Uh, if you've got smaller hands or long fingers, as it were, um, it's gonna feel pretty nice to you. 
Um, or if you just like a, a thinner handle knife where you can really just ball your fist up around it and get a good grip, that's going to be the one for you. Four inch blade, like I said, eight and three eighths inch overall. So she is long and lean for sure. And that East Indian Rosewood, I'm going to try to give you a close up of that so you can see some of the figure in that. East Indian Rosewood, uh, in my experience, uh, very hard to catch the grain on camera. Uh, better in person for sure, especially in sunlight. Uh, very subtle, a handsome grain, as it were, is how I would describe that. But that is the Nora. I'm going to set her right over there. All right, moving into more of the EDC style and size blades is the Little Lady. Of course, the smaller version of the old school Ladyfinger, which was uh, retired, semi-retired, coming out of retirement maybe still in retirement don't know we'll have to ask andy on that to be sure and he might not know yet either but uh maroon micarta really gorgeous on this little edc knife and that right there black liners with tiffany blue on the pinstripes i love the tiffany blue when it's used on the pinstripes that nice little subtle pop of color and it goes super well with that maroon micarta now the little lady is a full four finger grip, even though it's a smaller knife, it's only about seven inches overall, a uh, three inch blade, but it's got plenty of room on the handle. And especially if you're like me and you like EDC size blades uh, with a little bit thinner handle where you can really manipulate them and just, they just feel more precise in hand to me that way. Um, so if you're like me and you like that, you'll like this. So 330 seconds, 8670 on the steel, as you can tell by the hammer texture. Really nice little EDC knife, classy, subtle, I dig it. And here we go with another great EDC model. This right here is the Toboggan and it's in Sunburst Jade G10 with the Trinity pin out with the orange pins matching the orange pinstripes on those black liners. This thing is sick. Love the taper tang on there as well. Get to focus in for you. Eighth inch, 8670 on the steel with that taper tang. Let me tell you, the toboggan to be a small EDC size knife, you can really get some good grip on there. And with that blade being a little bit shorter in ratio uh, to the longer full figured blade, you can really get a lot of leverage on that blade right there. So if you're doing any kind of carving or whatnot on a regular basis, uh, this thing right here is awesome. Three and a quarter inch on the blade seven and a quarter inch overall just feels great in hand um, very underrated model when it came out but it's really gained a lot of popularity lately as people have got it in hand and started using it and it's well deserved this thing's killer i really like the toboggan i've always really liked it and then that sunburst jade sign me up i dig it and speaking of slim edc style knives this bad boy right here is the Esquire. I personally own one and love it. Absolutely love it. And I really love this one. Crosscut natural micarta, natural liners, red popping pinstripes. That thing is just handsome as it gets. And like I said, for an EDC knife, it's slender in design. You can fit four fingers on it, but if you're holding it in certain ways, you'll have to tuck your pinky behind it. Perfectly fine by me. It's very, very comfortable in hand, no matter how you hold it. I like the slender feel. Uh, it just makes it feel more nimble, uh, more precision based in my hand. That's personal preference, of course. 330 seconds on that 8670 steel, as you can tell by the hammer texture right there. Skeletonized full tang, two and three quarters inch on the blade right there. So nice functional size without being too big, especially if you live in a place that uh, doesn't like for you to have anything over three inches, uh, that'll be a good one for you. Six and a half inch overall, really good pocket carry size. That's what I love about it. That is the Esquire and it's kind of a big deal. And here's another great EDC knife. If you have a size limitation on what you need to carry, doesn't get any smaller than this. Well, actually it does, but I like this size because it's actually still functional. This is the runt and it is in that mocha lace wood I showed you earlier, which is absolutely stunning, especially when you throw it on black liners with a Tiffany blue pinstripe. Skeletonized full tang, as you can see right there. 
absolutely gorgeous 8670 on that steel of course it is 330 seconds so it is a slicer of course 8670 you can always tell by that hammer texture two inch blade on there five and a half inches overall tuck your pinky in go to work this thing is super reliable very very functional size really locks into your hand very confident and inspiring confidence inspiring for such a small knife as well uh, we actually use one around here all the time it's one of our most used knives so uh, if you need to take something out at the office without making everybody freak out uh, this might be the perfect size for you right here that is the runt and mocha lacewood now let's move on to the fiddleback family knives for which we have two of this week amy warlander enterprises it doesn't get any cleaner or sexier than amy's knives like this badger right here and mocha paper micarta absolutely gorgeous 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 she's got the pebble hammer texture going on that 5 30 seconds 86 70 steel really super sweet taper tang you don't see that many taper tangs from amy most of the time her stuff is a full tang it's a really nice to see her knock that taper out as well as she did that you can see right there i love the paper mocha micarta i i dig it i like the texture it's got kind of a kind of a lighter shade in the center for some reason when it finishes out just absolutely awesome so this particular knife for the badger three and a half inches on the blade eight and a half inches of full-on sexy so you got plenty of handle to lock into and your hand just really locks in but it doesn't feel like you're locked in it's kind of weird um, very confidence inspiring but it doesn't feel like you don't have hand movement it's kind of no matter how you move your hand around it just kind of fits so really nice upswept tip really sets it off amy knocked it out of the park and of course with amy as always it's a but wait there's more moment right here because amy is also a fantastic leather bender as you can see right there she makes custom sheaths uh, that go with all of her knives this one is custom dyed i love the fade she's got on there that basket weave absolutely stunning right there so that's amy's badger and then we've got one more fiddleback family knife coming up last but definitely not least joey berry jb knife works has killed it once again American Geo 2, my favorite chef knife. There, I said it. I've got chef knives from other people. I like Joey's the best. This particular design is just perfection. If you ask me, it's well balanced. It's absolutely gorgeous. What else do you need? Oh, well, how about black ash with a sunburst pattern on it? Look at that. Got that pretty pin on there but man that handle absolutely takes the cake natural liners it's got the white pin stripes on there just super classy oh man joey killed it killed it killed it with this one american Gyoto, of course it's got the japanese Gyoto inspired blade shape a little americanized a little more but it's got more of the american style handle you're going to be more familiar with most of the time uh, very very comfortable very well balanced and absolutely gorgeous so i'm just going to go ahead and say it right now seven half inch blade 12 inch overall if you don't think you're going to get what you wanted for christmas from santa well this can show up in your mailbox just after christmas just saying you could be celebrating new year with something sexy in the kitchen that's all i'm saying 330 seconds cpm 154 on the steel which is a great choice for the kitchen because it's going to stay shiny longer and be easier to take care of convex grind knock it out of the park guys listen that's it for our fiddleback friday life is too short to carry an ugly knife or use an ugly knife in the kitchen so get this jb knife works or one of these amazing fiddleback forge knives or that really super sexy one from amy with waterlander enterprises until next week see you later guys